Hi, I'm Lisa. I'm in my mid-30s, married to Mark. We live in this quiet little town, the kind where everybody knows everybody. Mark works as an architect, and I run a small bakery downtown. It's not fancy, but it's ours, and we've built a pretty nice life together. We don't have kids yet, but it's something we've been thinking about more lately. But there's this one thing that's always been like a thorn in my side. My sister, Monica. She's older than me by about five years. And, well, let's just say we've never exactly seen eye to eye. Monica is... complicated. I think she's always been jealous of the life Mark and I have. She's never been able to hold down a relationship, and I think it eats at her. But she's my sister, and even though she's difficult, I've always tried to keep her close. Growing up, our parents were pretty strict. They passed away a few years ago, and ever since then, it's just been me and Monica. I guess I felt responsible for her, even though she never made it easy. She's always been the type to stir the pot, you know? When we were kids, she'd get me into trouble just because she could. And now, as adults, she's got this habit of getting involved in my business, always under the guise of just looking out for you, Lisa. Mark has always been patient with Monica. He knows she's a handful, but he's never let it bother him much. I think he figured that if he just stayed out of her way, she'd eventually get tired and back off. But that's not how Monica works. She's like a dog with a bone. Once she latches onto something, she just won't let it go. Mark seemed a bit distant at dinner, don't you think? Or, I saw Mark talking to that woman from his office, the one with the long legs. They seemed... close. I mean, Mark and I have always had a solid relationship. We trust each other. But the thing about Monica is, she's persistent. She'd drop these little hints, and then just let them fester. One night, after Monica had left from another one of her surprise visits, Mark and I were cleaning up the kitchen. I could tell something was bothering him. He was quieter than usual, kind of lost in his thoughts. Finally, I asked, Is everything okay? He sighed, wiping his hands on a dish towel. It's your sister, Lisa. I'm starting to think maybe we need to set some boundaries. What do you mean? I asked though I knew exactly what he was talking about. She's, I don't know, she's just always around. And it feels like she's trying to plant doubts in your mind about me. You know I'd never do anything to hurt you, right? Of course I know that, I said. But even as I said it, I felt a little twinge of something. Doubt? Maybe. But I pushed it away. She's just lonely, Mark. You know how she is. Yeah, but that doesn't give her the right to mess with our lives, he said his voice soft but firm. I'll talk to her, I promised, though I wasn't sure what good it would do. Talking to Monica about her behavior was like trying to teach a cat to swim. Pointless. But I didn't want to upset Mark. Hey, you know Mark's been feeling a little... off lately. Maybe we could ease up on the friendly advice, you know? Oh, Lisa, I'm just looking out for you. You never know what men are capable of, especially when they get comfortable. He's my husband, Monica. I think I know him pretty well, she shrugged, taking a sip of her coffee. I'm just saying, don't let your guard down. It's a tough world out there. And as much as I hate to admit it, I started noticing little things. The way Mark would come home late sometimes, or how he'd be on his phone more often. Nothing major. Just small, stupid things that I'd never have thought twice about if Monica hadn't planted those seeds of doubt. But at the time, I still told myself it was nothing. Monica was just being Monica, and I wasn't going to let her mess with my head. Mark and I were fine. We were happy. And I wasn't going to let anyone, not even my sister, get in the way of that. The tension between Mark and me had been building, thanks to Monica's constant interference. But things really started spiraling out of control when Monica began spreading rumors about Mark. It wasn't just the little comments anymore. Now she was telling people outright lies. She'd whisper to mutual friends, I don't want to say too much, but Mark's been acting really suspicious lately. And then, somehow, those whispers would find their way back to me. Lisa, I didn't want to tell you this, but I think you need to know, she started, looking all serious. I heard from a reliable source that Mark has been seeing someone else. I felt my stomach drop. What are you talking about? That's ridiculous. Look, I wouldn't bring this up if I wasn't sure. My friend Karen saw him at a restaurant with a woman. They were sitting close, talking in hushed tones. It didn't look innocent. I tried to laugh it off, 
but her words hit me like a punch in the gut. Mark has business meetings all the time. It could have been a work thing. Monica leaned in, lowering her voice like we were conspiring. Lisa, please don't be naive. Men don't just meet with women like that for business. You know how these things go. I'm only telling you because I care about you. You deserve to know the truth. The doubts Monica had been planting in my head began to grow. I started watching Mark more closely, questioning every little thing. One evening, when he came home late from work, I couldn't hold back anymore. Where have you been? I demanded, my voice sharper than I intended. Mark looked confused. I told you I had a late meeting with a client. With a woman? I shot back. His face fell. Lisa, what is this? Why are you asking me this? Because people are talking, Mark. Monica's friend saw you with some woman at a restaurant. She said it didn't look like business to her. Mark's expression went from confused to angry. So, now you're listening to Monica? She's been trying to come between us for years, and now you're letting her? She's my sister, Mark. Why would she lie? Because she's jealous, Lisa. She's always been jealous of us. Of what we have. The argument escalated from there. I was convinced that Mark was hiding something. And no matter how much he denied it, I couldn't shake the feeling that something was wrong. Monica's words had wormed their way into my brain, and I couldn't get them out. Then came the day that everything fell apart. Monica called me, her voice trembling with fake concern. Lisa, I just saw something you need to know about. Mark, he was with that woman again, this time at a hotel. My heart sank. Are you sure? I'm sorry, but yes. I even took a picture. I didn't want to believe it either. But you need to see this. When she showed me the photo, a blurry shot of Mark entering a hotel lobby with a woman, I felt like my world was crashing down around me. I confronted Mark that night, holding up the photo like it was a weapon. What is this? I demanded, my voice shaking. Mark looked at the photo, then back at me. Lisa, this isn't what it looks like. I don't know what Monica's told you, but this is all wrong. Don't lie to me, Mark. I've been a fool for too long, but not anymore. I want the truth. Mark tried to explain, but I was too far gone, too consumed by the doubts that Monica had planted in my mind. I swear, Lisa, I've never cheated on you. This is all some twisted game Monica is playing. But I didn't believe him. I couldn't. Monica's lies had poisoned my mind to the point where I couldn't see the truth, even if it was staring me in the face. I want a divorce, I said finally, my voice cold and distant. Mark looked like I'd just slapped him. Lisa, don't do this. You're making a mistake. Please, think about what you're doing. But my mind was made up. The seeds Monica had planted had grown into a forest of mistrust, and there was no going back. Despite Mark's pleas, I filed for divorce. The process was quick, but it tore me apart inside. Mark moved out, and just like that, my marriage was over. After the divorce was finalized, I was a wreck. I couldn't eat, couldn't sleep. The guilt was suffocating. Every time I thought about what I'd done, I felt like I was drowning. And there was Monica, always there, pretending to comfort me. You did the right thing, Lisa. He wasn't good enough for you. You deserve better. But her words didn't help. In fact, they only made things worse. Deep down, a part of me knew that I'd been played, that I'd let Monica destroy the one good thing in my life. But it was too late to fix it. The damage was done. Months passed since the divorce, and my life felt like a shadow of what it once was. I moved through each day like a ghost, haunted by the destruction of my marriage. Monica was always there, trying to lift my spirits, but her presence started feeling more suffocating than comforting. Something about her constant reassurances began to feel off. It was during a chance encounter with some old friends that the first seed of doubt about Monica's narrative was planted firmly in my mind. We were at a small get-together, trying to rekindle old friendships, when the topic of Monica came up. You know, Lisa, it's always struck me as odd how Monica was always stirring things up, one friend commented after I shared how I was trying to move on. What do you mean? I asked, a knot forming in my stomach. Well, it's just, she's always had this way of twisting things. Remember back in college how she got caught lying about who trashed the common room? Always playing the victim, another friend added. Their words hit me hard. Memories of similar instances started flooding back. Times when Monica manipulated situations for her own benefit. I began to wonder. Had she done the same with Mark? Driven by a mix of dread and determination, 
I started digging. I scoured old messages and emails, looking for anything that might shed light on what really happened. I remembered the photo Monica showed me, the one that supposedly proved Mark's infidelity. Something about it had always bothered me. I decided to track down Karen, Monica's friend who was supposedly involved with Mark. After several calls and a bit of persuasion, I got her to meet me for coffee. I don't know what Monica told you, but it was all a setup, Karen confessed after I pressed her. She paid me to pose in that photo with your husband. I'm really sorry, Lisa. I didn't think it would go this far. Her words were like a punch to the gut, but also a strange relief. Finally, I had the truth. Armed with this new information, I confronted Monica. I found her at her apartment, the smug look on her face turning to surprise when she saw the fury in my eyes. I know everything, Monica. The lies. The manipulation. Why? Why would you do this to me? I demanded, throwing the printed emails and the confession from Karen on her coffee table. Monica's eyes flickered with something dark. Lisa, you're being dramatic. I did it for you. Mark was never good enough for you. Stop it. Just stop. I snapped, my voice cracking. How could you destroy my marriage, my happiness, just because of your own insecurities? You were always so naive, Lisa. I was protecting you. You're just overreacting as usual. No, Monica. I'm done. I see you for who you truly are now. We're done here. Monica tried to argue, her words escalating to shouts as I turned to leave. But I didn't look back. Walking out of that apartment felt like shedding a heavy coat I'd been forced to wear for too long. Cutting Monica out of my life was one of the hardest things I'd ever done. But it was also the most freeing. For the first time in months, I felt a glimmer of hope. I began to rebuild, piece by piece. Years had passed since I cut Monica out of my life. My bakery flourished, I found peace and solitude, and slowly the scars Monica left began to heal. I hadn't seen her in years, and that distance gave me strength. Lisa, I need your help, she said, coughing between words. My health. It's bad, Lisa. I don't have anyone else. Hearing her so vulnerable stirred something in me, but it wasn't enough to eclipse the past. Monica, after everything, how can you ask this of me? I replied. I know I've made mistakes, but we're family, she insisted, desperation leaking into her tone. Family? I scoffed. You destroyed my family, Monica. You took away the love of my life, and you want what? Forgiveness? Help? I owe you nothing. There was a silence, heavy and thick. Finally, she whispered, I thought you might forgive me. I guess I was wrong. You were, I confirmed, and ended the call. That night, I lay awake, thinking about justice, not just for myself, but for every wound Monica had inflicted on those who crossed her path. The next morning, I contacted a lawyer. I gathered all the evidence of Monica's deceit, the emails, Karen's confession, everything, and handed them over. It wasn't just about revenge. It was about righting a wrong. The case went to court, and with each session, I watched as the truth I had uncovered was laid bare for all to see. Monica's manipulations, her lies, and the pain she caused were all brought to light. The judge found her guilty of fraud and emotional abuse. Watching her face as the verdict was read, I saw the realization of her isolation dawn on her. She was sentenced to a term that reflected the severity of her actions. After the trial, I felt a weight lift off my shoulders, a weight I hadn't fully realized I'd been carrying. It was over. Monica would face the consequences of her actions, and I could finally move on, free from the shadow of her manipulation. With the legal matters settled, I found myself driving to a small house on the outskirts of town. It was where Mark lived now. He had moved on, but I needed to see him, to speak to him one last time. I knocked on his door, my heart pounding. Lisa, he said, his expression one of surprise and something softer. Mark, I... I'm sorry. For everything, I started, my voice thick with emotion. I should have trusted you, should have seen through her lies. I know, he replied, his voice gentle. I don't blame you, Lisa. I never did. Monica was... she was very convincing. We talked for a while, not just about the past, but about our lives now. About forgiveness and the paths we'd chosen. It wasn't a reconciliation, not in the romantic sense, but it was closure. A mutual healing of old wounds. <laughs>